Well, I am genuinely befuddled and genuinely impressed. Like, I'm going to go on about something again, something I go on and on and on about. But I want to see, now I know the sound isn't that amazing in here. And, and may I first say seasonal greetings to you all. It is, is it today? Yes, it's the winter solstice. A very sacred and important day and I'm glad to celebrate it with you. Mmm, mmm, special hot chocolate. Keeping me very relaxed in tough times. But um, first off, I just want to thank, thank you for subscribing. Thanks so much. It really, you know what? I um, I came up here to the, I came up here to the New Forest with like seventy three subscribers or something like that. I don't know why I I'm pretty good at remembering numbers, I guess. Um, and I'm up to one hundred and eighty, and I'm really chuffed about that. <laughs> Celebrate Revate Puff. Um, it's something else, and, and it's a privilege and a pleasure to read your comments. And you know, I read every comment, um, and I will as long as I can. I will. Um, it, yeah, it touches me greatly. Like, your praise is incredibly high, and I, and I thank you so much and bless you. You're wonderful. Someone asked me the other day, oh, you don't get many negative comments or you're quick to delete them. And it's true, I don't get many negative comments. Usually it's you, dick beats, being in a bad mood and talking some bitty crap. Just because this is like, you're a fucking drummer. And you know, when, when you can fucking manage to type between fucking wiping the drool from your mouth, um, you know, you say, hey, why the fuck do you bother doing this boring shit? Well, it's guitar shit, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry. And I love you to bits, but this probably ain't the place for you. But I'm glad you are watching, because you keep abreast of like the tunes that I make. Keep abreast of what I'm doing. Just to, to be honest, Richard, if you're watching, just because your opinion is valuable, you know? It's like, I'm going to be hoping that you're going to lay drums to it at some point. So your opinion is valuable. Not that valuable, but it is valuable in comparison to most people whose opinion doesn't matter at all when it comes to me writing my music. Um, you know, because first and foremost, I write the, the, the full band stuff. The acoustic stuff, not so much. I'm a bit more audience orientated with that. Um, but even with that, I very much write for me. Um very much right for me it's like with the metal stuff it's like this is kind of like i'm making what i would like to be listening to in honesty i'm still stuck in if you you can actually if you listen to it you can pare it down pretty quickly because it's like i'm still stuck in 1986 to 1988 very much so you can tell my, my guitar sound a lot of the time um that era of thrash was so exciting uh, I still listen to all that stuff all the time. I mean, I was listening to, like, um, um, Years of Decay, Overkill, you know. Who Tends the Fire? What a track. Overkill, Who Tends the Fire? Oh, my goodness. Wonderful acoustic intro. And then, like, the riff that Metallica ripped off for uh, Eye of the Beholder. Anyway, I'm befuddled and impressed because... The Vox Amp, the VT20, has yet again blown me out of my boots. I have to choose my words carefully here. Not because it's producing a wonderful sound, but because it's actually crap. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with me. Right. This is the sound um, done with like the amp modeling of the pedal. This is like a, a oh, I'll have to put you somewhere else. Um, this is like um, a clon sort of sound. Um, some delay, which is expression. Okay, now listen to this, okay? Turn it up a bit. Alright, 
have a listen. Just listen to the gen just listen to the dynamics, right? Try and memorize the dynamics. Especially well no, just all of the dynamics. <laughs> phrase right now anyone that uses like heavy delay like that will be able to tell you that um, you know like the Roland Jazz Chorus is probably the best amp the best single amp to put delay through because it has such a fucking like wide range a very very vibrant alive active dynamics right across the frequency range so with something like delay as it tails out you can hear every detail of the sound right the 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 Roland Jazz Chorus is wonderful for that the Fender Clean also with you know one of the reasons I gravitate to it um, a Fender Clean transistor amp a solid state um, with a really nice warm drive setup you know, you have to really work hard to get the drive warm and acceptable sounding, take the rough edges off. You know, with a nice old tape delay or digital model of that, sounds great. A old, like my old El Pico or a Fox AC30 at full crank or a JTM45 at full crank, any of the Marshall, like, master volumes, and any of the old, you know, tubey Marshalls, 50 watts wound wound all the way up for that dirty sound right okay with a delay sounds fucking naff it's the sound you can use and a sound many bands do use wonderfully but it's not got that really full full spread sound like it's not the Stephen Rothery sound it's not the David Gilmore sound it's trashy and certain frequencies poke out it's all over the place it's not good technically good it's good musically but not technically do you follow me anyway here is the vox modeling um turn it up all right same sort of sound but in the vox uh modeling a brian may AC30 full fucking pelt um, with a little bit of a clon for the flavour but I'm driving it and delay <laughs> Exactly the same delay. All over the place. Low ends as it copies, as it, you know, repeats, like some frequencies are being pulled out, others seem to be a a a amplified, accentuated. Exactly the way that the amp would in real life, exactly the way that an AC30 wound all the way would do in real life. Now isn't that something? Like this fucking thing is so good. When it's fucking modelling a valve amp, it's even doing the very failings that a valve amp can sometimes have for things like this. Isn't that incredible? Is it just me? I mean, I'm j is it just me? I hope I've managed to show you what I mean. Because I can't use that. That's like my old El Pico head trying to use some like really nice, complex, highly voiced um, delay into the old El Pico. And it'd be like, well, bits of it would be poking out. Bits of it would be gone. 
kind of ugly sound. Now, in a band, like say if that was Stone Cold, right? That would work wonderfully. That would work brilliantly in a band that was like doing space rock, right? Or any, any fucking rock band, that would work fine. But for that sort of Pink Floyd, for that sort of like, you know, long fucking edge, um, you know, Pink Floyd sounds, go back to it. Do you get me? Like that's consistent across the uh, across the dynamic range. Do you get me? And it's all compressed. Not one thing's poking out more than the other. You know that's doing what a nice tranny amp does when you pour effects into it. It's a great effects platform. You know. Um, that's why I use solid state amps a lot a lot of the time. I'm not. Um, yeah, you know, that's why they have their place in my studio. Um, but yeah. So which one do you think sounds better? I mean, it's, it's just incredible. What's incredible to me, and it gives me even more confidence in this wonderful little Vox amp, is, is that the fucking thing is actually making the mistakes that a good tube amp makes when you start putting you know, these crazy effects into it. It's literally doing ugly things in the way that a valve amp does. You know, it's a nice ugliness. Don't get me wrong, it's a great, it's a great ugliness. But it's a sound that, you know, I mean, yeah, like I say, it'd be great in stone cold. It would be great in, in warm dirt. But for this thing that I'm doing now, in here now, like it's not the sound that I want to use. And so, do you see, it's, but it's flabbergasted me and I had to run and get the camera and just forget, forget all the bullshit. I had to run and do this because it was like, wow, wow, you know, um, it's, this is like modeling again. This is not an expensive amp. This is not an expensive amp. There are literally beginners that go out and buy a Vox VT20. You know, the new one's cool as fuck. You can have it all on your tone window. Like, um, you have it all in a tone room. Like, so you just use your phone or whatever and you link it up and you just pick all your bits out of a fucking cupboard. <laughs> so it's like, I'll have that head, I'll have those effects in that order and lay it out like that. You know, this one's like a bit of an older generation. Um, so it's a bit more analog on the knobs. Um, I got it for 70 quid. For fuck's sake, this is not top end stuff. But I am fucking mind blown at what you can do with it, you know. Um, learning how to sync up the um, learning how to sync up the pedal and the amp, the the Vox Stomp Lab into the Vox amp um, has been a wonderful thing to learn. Um, especially at night time because it has an auxiliary input so if like everyone's asleep I mean right there behind that wall you know my, my girlfriend sleeps when I'm in here fucking poking away at some tune in the, in, in the evening um, and so I can't be loud okay can't be loud especially if she's got like a big fucking hole in the door for the dog <laughs> um, so it's like I have to be quiet, so I have to go into headphones, you know, and anyway, with the, you know, this is semi-detached, so we've got neighbours next door with kids, so after 11 o'clock, yeah, you have to, you know, shut the fuck up. And, uh, so the Vox, you know, takes the keyboards and headphones, so I have my drums and my headphones and all those guitar sounds, and, and like, and I missed at first, because it just fucking sounded like mush putting the, um, multi-effects into it, and I missed, you know, having the expression pedals. And uh, so that's why I was originally keen to get the two working together, but I'm glad I did. But what a demonstration there. You know, what the valve amp were doing in real life, which you, and it would be like, oh, that's, that's not good, that's not what I want. 
that it's doing that in the model. I mean, it, it's blowing me away, and I, I know it's fucking boring shit. Come on. I'm sorry, I keep going on about how good this amp is, but blimey, it's good. To think of the things that I said about modelling just 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, you know, modelling came on me, like, sneakily, you know. The first thing was, the first, the first bit of modelling that kind of got me was um, when I bought the Super Champ. Second one down, that one. When I bought the Fender Super Champ, and you know, I bought it for its clean valve channel. Like, that's all I wanted, Fender clean valve channel. I'll do the rest. And I started off that way, but when I started just dicking around, just messing around to see what it could do with the amp models. So at first it was just clean amp and messing around with the effects. The effects I didn't really find all that great. So I wasn't massively inclined to try the amps, but fuck me, when I did and I started messing, I was like, uh, oh, you know, and I think it was the blackface one, because it's a sound I know very well, um, for years using blackface, like, you know, decades of experience with Fender blackface. And uh, when I sort of switched it onto that blackface knob, and, oh, go back to the tweed, oh, go back to, all right. And went through the British Marshalls and all that, the high gain stuff, and then finding that sort of boogie sound, that like really American modern, you know, Metallica like sort of sound, huge sort of, oh, I don't know, because the one on there sort of sounds like it's a mishmash of Soldano and. EVH, you know, Soldano 5150 and sort of Boogie, sort of all rolled into one. And they call it American Metal or something like that. And I love the sound. I love it. And I use it all the time. And the Fender Clean sound fell by the wayside. That's when I started to sort of think modelling's quite come on, you know. Because I, I, got, I got into modelling right at the start and I didn't like it. And of course, you know, Chris, the snail driver... Bless you, my man. Good guy. Fucking great guy. Um, just get your telly up and running, shall we? Um, you know, he was sort of saying about particular drive sounds. and Yeah, that's the weak point of the old pod, isn't it? That's the weak point. A good drive sound is the weakness. You can get like a nice... I could probably get a Metal Zone-ish sound out of it. I could get like a DS1-ish sound out of it probably get a tube screamer ish sound out of it on its own but i wouldn't be able to get any of those complex you know staged gain you know it's like you know multi multi-stage gain i wouldn't be able to do there's a lot i wouldn't be able to do it that's its weakness and of course you know that's the fucking centerpiece of most of our tone so that's why for me it fell by the wayside early on you know 20 over 20 years ago and um so yeah 2016 getting the champ Started to turn me around on modelling. Very swiftly followed, of course, by the Boss BR600, which is, you know, the little 8-track digital recorder, but it has the Cosm engine in it for guitar and bass and, and vocals. Um, so you've got an enormous, like, capability in there to just to, it be a standalone thing. You don't need anything else, just the leads. You could totally go that way. And you know what? You wouldn't do a bad result. You could live, you could get a good sound. That amazed me as well, that in such a small machine with absolutely no sort of... I mean, it's 100% digital, right? 100%. I mean, that's like door territory, right? It's, it's very much there in terms of, cap you know, competence. There's no sneaky preamp valves. There's no... You know, there's no big anything that you have in an amp chassis to sort of like mess around with and do what Orange do and, you know, fake up your warmth. Um, it's all digital. And I'm amazed that the Cosm engine, I can get a tone out of that. I've got sounds patched away in there. All I've got to do is plug the guitar in, bing, bang, bong, and I'm in. Poosh. Don't have to fuck around at all. It's there. Yeah, that's quite amazing. So those two things are really what turn me around to modelling. And then, as I say... Um, I found myself practicing at night with the with the uh, Boss digital recorder way too much, so I wanted to get something that was just a toy for practice. And I looked at the Line Pod, Line Six Pod, Pocket Pod, 
Um, but, you know, I ended up going cheap and getting the Vox thing because it has the expression pedal all in one. All right. I went cheap. It was the best fucking deal. And I'm so impressed with it. Straight away, factory presets. I never judge a thing on factory presets. They're never much fun. But um, straight away, it sounded good, even factory presets. So that was swiftly followed. When I had my list, I had a hit list. Like I got a hit list with my guitars. You know, I got a something with the Floyd Rose. Got to have a traditional Strat. You know, got a something with Humbucker Super Strat. Blah, 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 blah. Right? I, I made a hit list for amps. So, yeah, Orange. You know, I've already got the Fenders. You know, I wanted a Marshall. And... Um, and I wanted a Vox. And it was just because this was 70 quid and I was so impressed with the pedal that I thought, fuck it, I'll get, I'll get the amp for 70 quid. I didn't expect it to be like, you know, what it is now, which is like the last word in my recordings. Like, um, generally, I fucking record with the Vox. All we get, you know, the best guitar sounds that I can make. Do, go DI uh, direct out of the Vox. Use use the recording output of the Vox amp straight into the raw, unaffected BR600 with the Cosm engine turned off. I've got actually a few Cosm patches that are just for um, like stereo inputs, so they're like very much sort of you know graphic EQ on each side, noise gate, and all that a bit of reverb if I want it, but essentially i can do it like it going into a mixing desk and um and and a full rack on the side this is what amazes me about that you know this modeling thing it's like what's in the signal in your head <laughs> it's like frames of stuff like in my head the signal that i'm talking about you know and this is for just a dry you know stereo guitar input coming from something like um you know like the output of either the vox amp or the output of the um stomp lab pedal um, both of which are stereo, so your reverb effects and stuff and delays and all that are operating in stereo, wonderfully thick. Um, yeah, just, so just that dry thing, it's like a, it's a, a graphic EQ left, a graphic EQ right, um, compressor, a limiter enhancer, um, reverb if you want it, and uh, noise gate. Uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Is there anything else? I think that's it so you know even just for nothing like that that's like about eight to ten u of rack space so something that's going to be this big that big and um uh two mixing desk channels which going into all the, the the eq that's there you know it's got like the triple parametric so yeah you're looking at a long channel strip um Wow, so it gets complicated. It, you know, it's like if it was if it was in reality, if it was if it was hardware, it, it wouldn't fit in this room. And uh, hopefully, I'll I will get to the point where it won't fit in this room. <sighs> you know, I can have a really nice like organ, you know, with the pedals and all that. Uh, you know, and I love those things. I've been offered one. I can have it for nothing. And it's a really nice example. It's a Yamaha. It's like a first generation digital. Um, it's a beautiful thing, been well looked after, and I'd love to be the custodian of it. But can I fit it in here? I don't know, I think I should try. <laughs> anyway, love you loads. I'll see you again. Um, thanks for joining me on this Tone Tuesday, and uh, I'm sorry it wasn't about much. Um, I'm going to do my um, Black Tree Fox Armoury items, so... Maybe a couple of them will crop up. So I might see you there if not. And um, wicked. All the very fucking best.